So welcome to the Wealthy Life Club's live masterclass. And yes, we are live. This is not recorded. This 30-minute class is designed to educate and empower you to make smarter financial decisions so you can make the most out of what you have and live your version of the wealthy life. Today's session is specifically for snowbirds, Canadians that are looking to spend their winters in a warmer climate south of the border. Well, who doesn't want to do that? We'll cover all the things you need to know before you travel, including how many days you're allowed to be out of the country, how to get better foreign exchange fees, and ensuring you have the proper health coverage in place, and more. The benefit of these live sessions is that you can ask your questions and get an immediate response. Now, I have to add a disclaimer. As always, this webinar is for information purposes only. Please seek independent professional advice before taking any action. Okay, let's get started. I am pleased to introduce Jerry Scott, the creator of Snowbirds US Day Tracker. Jerry also wears a second hat as a financial professional, and his expertise in cross-border issues has helped thousands of people, and it's going to help you today too. Jerry, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Over to you. Thank you, Sybil. Well, we'll get started right away. Sybil, you can see the, uh, you can see my slide deck. It's, I it's can. Of everybody. You okay. bet. So, as before we went on, uh, went live, Sybil and I were just talking about how this could be a reality show. Uh, everybody has their, their experiences and the stress and all the things that, uh, uh, that we have to deal with when we cross that border. And the biggest thing that I want to be able to go over with everybody is that a lot of times there is, it is not black and white. Uh, these border crossers, these agents have discretion. So if you do hear something and something that we say, remember the border crossing agent has discretion. I have sent in numerous emails to the, uh, the, the border crossing website. And that's the biggest word that comes back is discretion. So, as, as Sybil mentioned, we'll, we'll jump into it and I'll go over. Uh, uh, I am the founder of the Snowbird US Day Tracker. More importantly, I am a snowbird myself. I've been traveling back and forth to Maui for years and years and years. And uh, we've learned so much of all the things that you can and can't do and be careful with. So the, uh, the biggest thing that we're going to be going over today is, is uh, the pitfalls. The biggest problem that a lot of us are going to face from time to time, which would be very, very stressful, is what happens if we don't have all our ducks in line and we actually get denied entry into the United States? Uh, Sybil met, mentioned health insurance, what's covered from a provincial point of view and what's covered through your, the, the services that you buy through travel insurance, et cetera. Now, if you own a place in the United States, be very careful. We're going to cover this in a little uh, greater detail. Power of attorney. The power of attorney that's written in British Columbia is could not work in some of the states down south. And I always tell people to talk to a, a resident um, attorney, a lawyer down there in the states to make sure that if something was to happen to you, that you're gonna be fine. Now the list goes on. So like I say, what we're gonna to cover today is travel documents, travel insurance, medication, uh, USD. Uh, Sybil mentioned, you know, what is the best place, where is the best place to get uh, USD when you, uh, the dollars to be able to spend down there. We're going to talk a little bit more about the services combined when it comes to banking. We mentioned the power of attorney. And what something that's really important is let your children know the contact information, maybe your phone or your neighbor's phone, somebody down, down south when you are down there for extended periods of time. If they can't get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you through a neighbor or another trusted contact? So this is the biggest thing. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, when you jump across, when you travel across the border by land and what you have to be careful with. Now, a lot of folks, what they're doing is when they do travel, and you can see this is a little bit of humorous here, that uh, I don't think this person was intending to drive across the border and was a snowbird. But this was the best slide that we can illustrate. Be careful when you go across the border. People are heading down with their, their dogs, their cats, their computer screens, all these things. The agent will look into your car and he might not believe that you're just going down there for a, for a break uh, away from the warmer, the terrible weather we have up here in Canada. But are you going to be working remotely? And you've got to be very, very careful. 
and the other thing is when we talk about documents, we talk about your Nexus pass, your, your, your passport, but be sure to carry things like a foam bill, a hydro bill that shows that you have closer ties to Canadian soil than U.S. soil. And once again, and, I, and this presentation is available. You can send an email to Sybil. We'll get that email and we'll forward off this, this presentation. We have a lot of links that we won't go into today, but that is going to be kind of useful as a little bit of a manual that you can go on to uh, to see what you can and can't do. And once again, discretion is the biggest takeaway today is that these border crossing agents have discretion and you have to learn to use one word answers when you're being drilled and asked uh, certain questions. Don't go into greater great detail. Do not try and educate anybody. Uh, these border agents are, um, uh, some of them are nice, some of them aren't nice. So today we're gonna, we, we mentioned, we're gonna talk about uh, the travel insurance. There's all kinds of travel insurance out there. Do not go down to the States without travel insurance. Um, there's great providers out there. And please do not treat this travel insurance like a commodity. Um, learn, learn from a great provider. Uh, we work with a firm out of, um, out of Ontario called Can-Am Can Insurance. Uh, you can actually buy this insurance right off our app that we've created. And it really allows you to, um, to get a great quote, a great price. They'll educate you if you call in. But please take the time because the stories that we hear from people that are falling out of the golf cart and breaking their ankles or whatever the case is or, or having strokes or whatever, it will bankrupt the family when, you, when you're going into that um, American hospital. Remember, the healthcare system in the United States can be very, very expensive. Uh, there are some state-run hospitals you can go into, uh, and but be careful. This is the, probably another one of the big takeaways is that make sure you're properly uh, properly covered when you go down to states. Um, the other thing that we get asked a lot about, and, and and a lot of these things that I'm sharing with you today is is my time of traveling back and forth to Maui since 1981, and more so from '94 on. Um, we spent a lot of time in Maui. We live in a little town called Wailuku. Uh, we're not really tourists when we're there. We're, we're part of the Ohana. We get to know a lot of people. Um, we found ways, um, if you need medication, uh, there might be a doctor friend that I have, but get familiar with, and once again, these links are very, very helpful to tell you what you can bring across the border, what you have to disclose when you're being, um, when you're going to the, the kiosks, uh, the customs in the United States, uh, the, the border crossing. Uh, but these sites are very, very helpful on what you can and can't bring. And when you're down there, um, I, I believe that foreign prescriptions cannot be um, cannot be filled. Uh, we found a way way around it. Uh, a good friend of mine is a, a doctor in Maui, and he will write the scripts for us if we need something. Now, we're not big users at this time in our life of uh, prescriptions, but um, really check out these links. And like I say, please ask for this presentation. Uh, these these links will really take you, take you to some great resources that you can follow up on. Um, the other thing that Sybil did bring up is not just buying USD, but really having some banking services out there. That So when you do go across the border, you can open up a, a U.S. bank account. You can open up, you cannot open up a U.S. investment account. But uh, I know some of the major banks in Canada do offer some great services. As an example, Rural Bank bought Bank of Georgia many years ago. Uh, we use uh, that for transferring money back and forth. We have our credit cards through the Bank of Georgia, and they provide some great services for us um, as we need money. We have access to all the, um, the exchanges in, in the United States, or in our case, Maui, that if we need cash, it, it's, it's very quick and, and very simple. And, of course, banking online nowadays has really come a long ways in, in our during our time. Um, the other thing, when it comes to buying US, uh, US dollars, be careful on your credit cards. Uh, not only are you gonna get charged, uh, uh, if you miss a payment, they're gonna charge you a rate, but they're also gonna charge you a very, very expensive um, uh, exchange fee. Uh, one of the services that we've offered is that we found a way to, to provide some great exchange rates for uh, some of the families that we work for. Uh, Sybil did mention that I have a, a dual role. We created this app for all those snowboard clients we deal with, uh, but at the same time, we're always looking for uh, 
uh, great deals and we found a great solution around the um, the USD. So please reach out uh, if you have questions about USD because it can get expensive when you're converting Canadian dollars to US dollars. Um, oh, sorry. Um, and once again, some of the things we did touch base, uh, credit cards, all these services, um, currency exchange, US dollar bank accounts, ATMs, debit payments, and when you're away, you still have to make those payments in Canada, may it be your, uh, uh, your hydro bill, your phone bill. You take off for six months, you're going to come home, and, uh, and we don't want to see you lose those services. So um, there are the banks have done a very good job on providing Internet banking services for us snowbirds when we're down south. Now, this is something that a lot of folks just don't understand, and, and, and I think it's like travel insurance. We just do not prepare. Nothing's going to happen to us. Um, if you have your will written in Canada, you would have your you would have your executor. If you were to pass away, become an angel. Uh, you would have a power of attorney if you if you had a stroke and you were unable to act on your you know act for your own uh, behalf and someone had to look over after you. Uh, we have a power of attorney in the states. Be very very careful that that. And let's assume that a lot of folks are from British Columbia, Ontario, et cetera, that are watching this this afternoon, make sure you talk to an attorney or uh, a lawyer and making sure that that power of attorney is gonna function in the state that you're, where you have residence. And it's very, very important. Uh, uh, we've heard so many stories. And, and once again, you know, what we have is we've built a lot of great relationships in all the snowbirding nests. May it be Florida, may it be uh, Arizona, California, Palm Springs, et cetera. Um, uh, uh, the Carolinas, we've got great relationships with uh, attorneys that we've actually set up and we're sending a lot of Canadians their way to make sure that they have proper POAs in place or what we call power of attorneys. So this is really about really being prepared. And I think uh, this is the, the other role that I have as a, in the financial services industry is, uh, yes, we manage money, but we also write very detailed plans for our clients. You know, making sure that all those unexpected are, are covered off. Um, oh, did I go too far here? Um, and that's really um, what we've done here is we've included uh, a checklist that is available. And at the same time, we've also made it available that we have, uh, uh, you can download the app that we put in place. We have a new version coming out. Um, this app is really used by that 55 plus audience. Uh, which would include myself. And the next version of the app, which should come out late August, early September, is the graphics, everything on it is going to be a lot, a lot easier to uh, to to function and, and track everything for you. One thing that we did not add on this app is there's discrepancies around a 365 day. Um, you know, we know about the three year rule where it's one third sorry, one six, one third, and then a full day for the current year we're in. And you can't exceed those days. Uh, you can't exceed 183 days. Um, and if you do, you have to fill out, uh, file an 8840 with the IRS. And it's easy to do, it's available on our app. But the one thing we did not include is that there's a lot of discrepancy around this 365 day rolling calendar. How many days have you been in the States for the last 365 days? From an immigration point of view, you can never spend more than six months. When you head across the border, you might not be aware of this, but it's called an I-94. They stamp, they basically enter in the system, and these systems talk between Canada and, and United States. How many days when you, in our case, we entered October 20th last year, and we had to be out of the country by April the 20th. And that was six months to the day. And if you exceed it, you're gonna run into a tax problem. And never mind, you're going to be in the country illegally and you've got bigger problems than just tax. So uh, we're always available if you have any questions. And like I say, discrepancy amongst these borders make a lot of the things that we're going to tell you today. Um, um, it's hard to give you the exact answer because we don't know which border crossing agent out of the 10,000 they have guarding the, the U.S. border. Uh, um, it's really confusing. Uh, the app just allows you to be a little bit more compliant. We also provide a lot of great videos on the app for your, yourself as well, too. So we talk about the I-94. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, anything you can think of. Uh, we're, we're covering in these, these topics. 
So um, Sybil, it was short and sweet. I didn't want to stress people out too much. <laughs> so if you have any questions, uh, we will answer them as best as we can. And, and some of the questions we're going to, uh, if they're too tough, uh, we're going to have to get back. Yeah, that's great. Great, Jerry. I'm going to kick it off with a few questions. But while I'm doing that, for those of you that want to ask a question, just type it in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. I will review those. We do have a large group, so we'll try to get to as many as possible. If for some reason we don't answer your question today, just email us info at the wealthy life.com. We'll connect you with Jerry. And Jerry, what's uh, an email address they could maybe reach you at? Yeah, they could reach us at jerry.scott at snowbirdapp.ca. Great. Probably the best one. That's that's fantastic. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and I know you're just skimming the surface here, but an obvious question that comes to mind is, what are the, what is the concern at getting about getting across the border? What are some of the common reasons that people are refused entry to the United States? Or maybe another way of looking at that is, what is the U.S. government concerned with? Why can't people just go down there freely? Well, the biggest thing is entering the country, country illegally. That's that's the biggest thing. And 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 when you when the agent believes that you're entering the country illegally, or that's the opinion they have formed, they think you're going down there and you're not being you're not disclosing the, the, the main reasons for your trip. And working remotely is the big one at the border right now. They're watching for this. They're watching for people with screens and computers. And, and uh, you know, if you do get called in, they have the ability to check for everything, your phone, your computer, you name it. So, that's so they, the don't want, they don't want people moving down to the United States or spending a bunch of time down in the United States without going through the proper process. So they don't want people working down there um, unless they've gone through the right paperwork. So these are some of the things that they, it's why they, they ask the questions that they do and it's why they refuse entry sometimes. The big word to avoid is working. The big W, be careful. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's what you gotta be careful. And, and once again, people have spent millions of dollars on these beautiful residences down in 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 Mesa, in, in uh, Palm Springs and San Diego. When you get denied entry when you're a Canadian, it is a big problem. It's, it's a very, very big problem. And for people who just truly want to go and, and enjoy the sunshine or the golf or whatever their reasons are for spending a few months a year in the U.S. while they're a Canadian citizen, that's all great, but you just have to do it right. And you talked about the day tracker, and I, I want to emphasize how important this is, because I don't think most people understand there is a maximum number of days that you can actually be in the United States without having to then file U.S. tax forms and potentially have tax implications of that. And the formula is not simple. The average person, I think, says, oh, as long as I don't spend more than six months a year down there, I'm fine. But Jerry, that's not true, is it? No, <clears throat> I think what people have to be careful with is that there's confusion. There's two, sub two subjects that are be trying to be covered here. One is immigration and one is tax. And immigration is around the I-94. You can't, you know, you've got six months, which is 182 days. You cannot exceed that when they when they punch your, when they set up your I-94. There's an entrance and a, there's an exit. Now, people believe that they can leave the country for 30 days and come back down and, and the I-94 will start, will restart. Well, if you're lucky enough to meet someone nice at the border that will do that for you, good for you. But in most cases, they just say, hey, listen, you're going down, you're going back, you're spending more time in the States. You got to be careful. So immigration is, is built around the I-94. Taxation is built around 183 days over a three-year period. And every day that you spend in 2020, you would count, let me do this right here. Every day you spend in 2020, you would add all those days up, put them in the, in the app, and the app would calculate one sixth of those days. Every day in 2021, you add up all the days and you get one third of those days as part of the formula. The current year you're in, which is 2022, every day counts. So you take that formula and if you exceed 183 days, uh, you're gonna be required to fill out the 8840. Now the 8840 is a very simple form. You don't have to run off your account and have them charge a lot of fees. The answer is Canada, 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 Canada. 
closer ties. Where's your principal residence? Where do you vote? Where are your bank accounts? Where do your kids go to school? Yeah. Well, so, Jerry, I've, I've got some great questions coming in now that are piggybacking off that. So with that day count, um, if somebody's down there for, let's say, four months over the winter months, but then comes home for three weeks at Christmas and then goes back, does the three weeks they're back home in Canada, is that exempt? Yeah, and that's where it's confusing because the answer is, is that you might not have to add those days on the formula. And once again, when I, when I, when I share my opinion, it's going to be argued because there's discretion around this. So what you can, on the app, you can exclude those dates. But then you run into another problem. It's the I-94. The, the border crossing agent will assume that you had stayed the entire time just because you left for three weeks. Now, I've gone through this. Sometimes it's worked to my advantage. Someone said there was a 30-day rule. and We asked the border. I sent emails into the border crossing website. And they get back to you. They're very good. And they say, well, we leave it, it's discretion. It's up to the border crossing agent. So be careful that it might, it might not count for the 183 days, but it will work against your I-94. And they'll see that uh, if it's October 20th, uh, October 20th, you entered the country, even if you went home, your I-94 would only be good till April the 20th. And these right. are personal stories that, you know, these are personal experiences that I'm sharing with you. Devils in Everybody the has one. It's confusing. It is. And another similar question. What about if down in Florida for a few months, but instead of coming back to Canada for that three weeks at Christmas, you actually end up going to another country. Maybe you're in Europe, you're in Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica. Um, would those days be exempt? Um, once again, discretion, because usually what happens is if you let's say, for example, cruising is the big one. You fly down, you're staying in Florida, and you get talking to going for a cruise for a couple months. Um, once again, you're deemed, from an immigration point of view, discretion, you are deemed to have not left the country. And it's still clicked, it still goes on. And you're still expected to, let's say if the Scots went down October 20th, they were in Florida for three months, went on a two-month cruise, and they spent another couple months there. We are still deemed to have spent, from an immigration point of view, um, that's where the problem is. We haven't exited the country back to Canada. So yeah. sadly, discretion, discretion, discretion. Yeah. And this is where the app comes in handy because you can just plug in all those dates and it'll help you do the, the math on it. Um, an easy question here. Uh, we had uh, somebody join us a little bit late wanting to get a copy of the recording. Absolutely. We're going to have this recording will be on the Wealthy Life website. It will also be, Jerry, on, I think, your website. Do you want to provide your website address? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's just snowbirdsusdaytracker.com. And I believe it, it would also, it probably will be also on Snowbird Wealth Management as well. Uh, we'll have right. it on the website as well. Great. And uh, you can also, to get it a little bit earlier, you can always email us at info at thewealthylife.com. And we'll make sure we get you a recording. And a question, I think you've, you've lightly touched on it, but maybe we could expand a bit more. What is the reason for the six month limit? Well, that is just, um, it's basically, it's a visitor visa. And, and because of the relationship between Canada and United States, we are able to go down for six months on a visitor visa and no issues whatsoever. Well, you're visiting. You're a visitor. That's all you're doing. So it's just a, it's an agreement between Canada and United States. Now, the Americans can actually come up to Canada. But sadly, we don't we don't really enforce the rules like the Americans do. So yeah. it really is. It's just built around the it's called a uh, and, and, and I apologize if I'm wrong, but I believe it's called a B1 visitor letter. B1 visitor um, right. visa permit slash. Yeah. So there are ways around it. I mean, there's there's some people like another question has come up. Um, a concern of theirs is they just bought a place in Mesa, the plan to head south mid-October through to February. Um, but they've already had quite a bit of travel in 2021 and 2022 um, and spent quite a few days in the state. So they're getting close to that limit. Is there a way that you just fill out a form to let the government know, hey, look, 
uh, I'm not trying to immigrate there. I'm not working there. I just, I am a vacationer. Uh, what do they do if they know they're going to exceed the number of days? Yeah, once again, if you do exceed those those days over a three year period, you once you you get close to 183, it doesn't have to be 183 or less or whatever. Just get in the habit of filling out the 8840. And the 8840, their mailing address is the form is available to download. The form is the address is where you sent into Austin, Texas every year. I think the filing date is I want to say August of, uh, April the 15th. But just get in the habit of really having full disclosure when you go down. And, you know, there, this kind of expands to another question that what we're dealing with a lot of our friends in Maui is when you go to Maui, you don't want to leave. I mean, you're, you really are in a bubble. So we're seeing more and more Canadians um, heading this route through the immigration officers and, and applying for an E2 visa, which is an investment visa. And this is allowing a lot of our friends in, in Maui to buy businesses, uh, spend a certain amount of money. And like I say, the E2 visa is an investment visa. And what that does is it allows you to uh, to spend more time in the States uh, and and not have to go back. In fact, under the E2 visa, and just talking to our immigration lawyer, um, I believe you can spend up to two years without leaving the country. You have to leave after two years and go home. And, and I think every five years, you have to renew your E2 visa, making sure that you're not just down there, you know, um, selling... Um, ice cubes on the beach or whatever. You really do have to have a legitimate business. It has to be uh, beneficial to the Americans. Um, you don't necessarily have to employ a lot of people, but it has to be an active business. It's it's not a, uh, it's, it's not renting surfboards down by the beach and there's a thousand Canadians doing it. It is a, it is a strict process. It can be expensive. Uh, it usually runs around $8,500 US to go through the process and then your spouse would pay another 4,500 uh, to to include to be included in that E two visa as well, and that's but it's very an helpful. option. But it's an option, and I think that's the point here: is be aware of the limitations, be aware of the complications. Nobody wants to get refused entry when they're on their way to a beautiful beach vacation to Maui, or wherever it is your preferred destination is. Um, Jerry, thank you. I do have one last question, time for one last question here, and it is related to the currency side of things. So obviously, you know, when you travel down to the U.S., if you're just using your Canadian debit card, is that the best way to pull out U.S. dollars or should people be opening a U.S. account with a U.S. debit card so that they're not doing the foreign exchange fees every time? Well, there's two ways of doing it. You can do it on the Canadian side. What I encourage people to do is always have a, um, a U.S. denominated account with your bank. Uh, make sure you have a U.S. denominated credit card as well. Now, however you buy your currency, and there are ways, and they can, they can reach out to us. And, and once again, being a snowbird, and uh, I wanted to find ways to get the best rates on uh, purchasing USD. But the process is, like, the quickest thing you could do is like I say, have a U.S. Um, denominated account at your bank and have a U.S. credit card at that bank as well. Because the exchange fees um, on average for the credit card, I'm going to say they're around 3%. And I know places, little secrets, I know places where you could buy currency at 0.25 over the spot. So we'll leave that as a little bit of a... A little bit of a, a teaser. A little, bit, a little um, teaser. Yeah, and so... Um... I know we're out of time here, but I just there is one more that has just popped up that's great. Um, do the same rules apply if you're a dual citizen? No. There we go. That's a great answer. And I assume the eighty form 8840 is available on the app. And yes, that's a yes. And then a lot of these other resources, I think, are available on the app. So people should just download the app. Download the app, and there is a there is a YouTube channel, uh, uh, Snowbird US Day Tracker, uh, and we're doing lots of great avatar videos. Uh, they they're very very informative. We're trying to keep it our our demographics is we can only kind of stay focused for two minutes. Uh, these mm -hmm. videos are sometimes uh, two minutes or less. There's a couple of them that are longer because it's a little bit more. You can't be quick. Uh, you can't be quick on some of these subjects. So. We're always available. Uh, Sybil, thank you very much for having us as a guest. We love what we do. Uh, we love the snowbirds because we understand the snowbirds and why we leave. It is gray up here in Canada in the wintertime. So yeah, I love Canada, well, but I do love down south. 
It is, Jerry, thank you. Uh, final reminder, the webinar information purposes only. Obviously, this is technical in some areas, so you do need to seek independent professional advice before taking action. And uh, what would you like us to cover next time? Email us. We love hearing from you and your friends and family. And I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for following us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. Help us educate more people so more people can live the wealthy life. Have a great afternoon, everyone.